So now that uh, you've seen uh, the fans in detail, now the next step is to take you uh, through the test bed setup that I'm going to use to test each of the sets of fans on. Um, the test bed is uh, physically is, a, is an Asus Rampage 3 Black Edition motherboard with an uh, Intel i7-990X on it. It's got 6 gig of RAM on it. It, it, it had 12, but I took 6 off to, um, to, um, to be able to get the overclock on this, the highest overclock that I could get on this guy. With uh, all 12, I, I was having trouble. So uh, GPU is a basic uh, GTX 460 uh, Zotac. The disk, a boot disk, is a uh, Intel 510 120GB SSD. The fan controller is a Kazi Master Pro. The CPU block is a Coolant RP452 by 2. Uh, fittings that I have on this test bed so that I can quick, easily uh, disconnect um, the radiators or uh, reservoirs, whatever I need to. Uh, it's all Coolant's quick disconnects on the test uh, bench here. The radi radiator is an XSPC RX360. And the power supply is a Corsair HX1000HX. OS is Windows 7, 64-bit uh, with Service Pack 1. And the um, test bench itself is a DMUS Tech uh, bench. Uh, it's called the Test Table uh, Easy Version 2.5. So uh, with that now, uh, I'll show you each of the pieces up close now. OK, uh, here is the uh, test bed set up for uh, testing out the uh, running the fans. Uh, the uh, test bench itself is a Demus Tech um, uh, version 2.5 test bench and I have some other options that came with it uh, but uh, this is all I really uh, ever use right now. So the, what's sitting on this test bench is um, a, uh, the motherboard is a Rampage 3 uh, Black Edition uh, motherboard from uh, ASUS. It's uh, hosting an i7-990X um, Intel CPU. Uh, the RAM on it is G-Skill 1600 megahertz RAM and uh, it's 6 gig. I do have, I had 12 on it but in order to get the overclocks that I wanted um, the memory controller couldn't handle it with the, all, all the memory slots filled up. So um, the, uh, the video card on here, the video card is a Zotac uh, F GTX 460 uh, Amped Edition card although that's not going to make a big uh, difference for this fan testing but that's currently that's the video card that's on it. Um, this uh, uh, of course this uh, system is um, uh, water cooled and the water cooled components uh, on it uh, even the uh, the Northbridge and the Southbridge chipsets on here are water cooled with a uh, um, EK um, Rampage uh, 3 Black Edition um, um, chipset um, there is a, take a look, there is a Coolance CPU 370 um, block on there. And we also have um, for the uh, reservoir, it's a Coolance RP452 uh, times 2 reservoir. I only have one of the uh, reservoir uh, bays um, being utilized right now. And then above it is a Kazi Master uh, Pro fan controller. And uh, the hard disks in there, the, the OS disk is a um, Intel 510 uh, 120 gigabyte SSD. And then the, uh, the, the, the data drive on it is a 500 gigabyte um, spin rate from Samsung. And course there's a bunch of quick disconnects on there and uh, so it's easy to take stuff on and off that motherboard and then the uh, the radiator is an XSPC RX 360 and what's powering this guy hidden underneath the back is a uh, Corsair um, HX series 1008 HX power supply so um, that's the uh, CPU setup and um, the plan is to um, uh, run the fans um, at full speed with a, a mild overclock, if you will, at 4.3 um, 
4.3 with uh, a 1.4 volts uh, for the CPU. The, uh, the, the base clock is at 100 and the multiplier is 43. So I'm going to run it once there uh, for about 30 minutes and record the, uh, the uh, temps and the average temp and compare it against the ambient. And then I'm going to run it at a uh, overclock at 4.68 megahertz. And that's, uh, but I had to crank up the volts. This guy doesn't seem to like anything above close to 4.7, no matter what I do. So I was able to get a stable overclock at, with 1.535 volts on the CPU core. The uh, base clock is at 167.5 and the multiplier at 28. Um, so that's going to generate some heat and we'll see how it dissipates. And I plan to, I'm going to run these fans at their stock um, speed. And, uh, and I'm going to, you know, I'll put all this in a table when all uh, Plus, I will also um, set the microphone so you can hear these fans running at their uh, rated speed and, uh, you know, give you a chance to, to hear them for yourself with the setup. Um, so hopefully that gives you some information on each of the fans and we'll see how they perform underneath uh, uh, these scenarios. I'll uh, take this off real quick and give you a closer look at the um, there's the Zotac amped water blocks G-Skill RAM, CPU, coolants, with the quick disconnects, quick disconnects on the uh, XSPC, RX360. And then what you'll see here is this temperature probe that's hanging out right here. Let's see. Here's the temp probe. And the fan speed, I have all of the fans will be connected to, to the Kazi Master Pro. And so uh, here is uh, each of the, uh, the fan connections, one, two, three. And currently on here, I have the uh, Silverstone AP121s on here. And these are gonna be all run in a pull configuration. Uh, that's what I run in my systems. Um, I have tried push-pull, but maybe buys you a degree or so, at least for the, the low speed fans that I use, so it's not worth it. Uh, I, I rarely use push-pull, I just, I always use pull. And uh, so the air is coming through here, and yes, you know, technically you can have some heat coming off of the uh, RAM, but that's unlikely. And it's, uh, you, you see the, the temp in here in the room right now is 23.9 uh, degrees. So. I'm going to run these in a pull configuration because that's what I use on my system. So they're going to be oriented at pulling the air through and out through the rad. That is the uh, config I'm using. So uh, here are the uh, fan connections and the, uh, the right here are each of the uh, fan number two, fan number three. So we'll get them all up. So fan, fan three is at 1440. Fan two says it's at 1500. Fan one is at 1470. At least that's what the uh, Kazi Master Pro is reading. And here is the uh, the Intel SSD. And then the uh, so for the drive. testing. For um, each fan set, I'm going to use OCCT version 4.3.1 and the CPU LINPAC test. I've set the uh, time, the duration of the test for about 35 minutes with an idle period of about a minute at the front and end of the testing. And uh, so I'll get at least a good 30 minutes out of that. Um, you can see the first overclock that I'll run on the fans is at 4.32. And uh, using CPU-Z, you'll see um, that the, um, the core speed is 4.321, uh, the multiplier is 43, and the bus speed uh, or the base clock is at 100. 
the um, core voltage on the CPU in the BIOS is 1.4, but with load line calibration that fluctuates down a little bit. It's right now showing 1.39 um, on this particular look at it. And then what I'll do is I'll take the temps uh, at idle before I start the test running. And then at about 30 minutes in um, during testing, I will also take the temps and record those um, uh, so that we can get our delta uh, delta T be for um, for each of these sets of fans. The uh, ambient temperature will be taken from that probe right there, uh, currently coming off of the uh, or wired to the um, Kazi Master Pro, and you can see it's 23.8 degrees in here right now. So that'll, I'll do that on each of the uh, fans tests. Before the test, I'll take the ambient temp um, as reported on the uh, Kazi Master Pro through that uh, temperature probe hanging there in front of it for the room. So what I wanted to do here is real quick recap the, uh, the overclock settings that I described, um, I just described in the, uh, in, in the video there. Um, the test bench is set up with the fans in a pull configuration on the radiator. That's the way I have 99% of the fans in my, my systems. Um, the overclock stability uh, tool that I use is OCCT 4.3.1. And uh, I ran the tests uh, on each side of the fans for at least uh, about 30 minutes, uh, no more than 35, because that was the test duration for the test. Um, I let them cool down for at least 15 minutes between tests. Uh, I ran each of the sets of fans three times for each of those temps, and I used the median value. Uh, the uh, temperature tool that I used was core temp 1.0, uh, release candidate 3. And then the CPU overclock verification tool is CPU-Z version 1.59. The uh, overclock settings for 4.3 was a uh, V-core um, of 1.4 volts, the base clock at 100 and the multiplier at 43. And uh, for the 4.68 overclock um, in the BIOS, I had to crank it up to 1.55 volts with a base clock of 167.5 uh, and a multiplier of 28. So um, those are the two overclocks. 4.3 is a pretty healthy overclock as it is. And then I tried to get the most that I could uh, out of that uh, 990X on this setup. And I got 4.68 stable. So those are the two overclocks that you're going to see all these fans run in. Um, one thing to note, uh, I, I'm, you're coming up, you'll see a video of the uh, one of the fans. But basically, for all the fans, I recorded the fan. I recorded a picture of the um, um, of the uh, the tool on the screen. Then I recorded a picture of the uh, uh, temps and uh, and CPU Z to show you the overclock. So it's the same thing across the board. Now, the one thing that uh, I'll tell you is, uh, you know, I wrote down the temps um, before I videotaped the screen or at the same time. So, but the temps change. If, you, if you're familiar with uh, core temp, the, the temps will, you know, cycle through as they're reading. And uh, so I had to jot them down. So the temps you might see on the screen may or may not be what's in the table that I'm going to show you at the end. So rather than showing you tons of shots of screenshots for each of the overclocks on each of the sets of fans, I'm just showing you a sample of one. You have to trust me that I spent over two weeks compiling this data. And, um, and then at the end, after that one, I have a table uh, for each of the sets of fans that shows you the, the temp values that I took, the median one, uh, that all of my testing here is based on. So, uh, so with that, uh, Let's uh, show you um, one set of shots uh, for one of the fans that I uh, did, you know, during the testing that I did record, and then you'll see uh, each of the uh, each of the fans. I have a table set up for each of them with a slide on the um, on the overclock and the temp settings um, for each. Okay, we have the Casa Apache Black fans on the test bench now. Um, and uh, we're running OCC T 4.3.1 for about 35 minutes. And we have here uh, the CPU currently clocked at uh, 4.6 uh, 
six, eight, nine. Over here under CPUZ, we have uh, showing the 4.689 uh, with a 28 multiplier and a 167.5 base clock. Um, you see the core voltage at 1.54. In the BIOS, it's actually at 155. And uh, I've already taken the uh, idle temps. We're currently under load right now. And we're going to let it run for about 30 minutes. And then I'll get the uh, temps. And then we'll wrap up uh, testing with the, uh, the Akasa Apache Black fans. All right, so this wraps up the testing with the uh, Akasa Apache Black fans. Uh, finishing uh, the 4.68 overclock, and I uh, already took the temps down. So uh, we will uh, put all of them together uh, with the other fans, uh, and uh, we'll take a look at the uh, results to see which fans uh, did uh, uh, did the best job in a uh, pull configuration on this uh, on this uh, uh, baseline test bench. Um, so coming up next, the results. Okay, for the uh, first of the fans, uh, these are the results for um, the Silverstone SST AP121. And just to take you through um, uh, the calculations here and the ta way the ta table set up, um, here we have the uh, the cores, and what I did is recorded the uh, temperature for each of the cores three times, and I took the median uh, one. So uh, here it is uh, in idle. Then the total of all of those temps, all six temps, then the average of them, and then the ambient that I recorded off the Cosimaster Pro in the room at the time, and then that gave us the delta, the difference between the ambient and the uh, the average temp of all the cores. And then here is the results for uh, uh, the load, under load, for the 4.3 overclock. And then again, I did the same thing for the 4.68. I have uh, six temps taken uh, at the end of about 30 minutes. Um, the total, the average of the average temp under idle at that overclock, what the ambient was in the room at the time, and the delta between, difference between the two, and then under load. So you'll see that uh, taken here. Uh, of course, all temps are in uh, Celsius. So here's the Silverstone. You can always pause your screen if you want to look at it any uh, anymore. I'm just going to take you through uh, each of the fans now. Now at the very end of the video I have a summary uh, so you can see all of the fans compared against each other. So that's, uh, that's coming up at the end. But next, uh, one of the things that um, a lot of the fans uh, will tout is their uh, noise level, their uh, dB, their decibels. And uh, I uh, put them on and I, what I did is um, uh, as they were configured on the radiator before I th before I started the testing or maybe after it didn't really matter, um, I put the microphone in the same spot on the RAM for each um, fan set, and then I let it run it would complete quiet um, for uh, in the room for 15 at least 15 seconds. Um, the so the video that's coming up now will be each of the fans about 15 seconds of each and you'll be able to hear the difference between them. So um, you get to decide for yourself uh, which ones um, uh, are okay for your listening pleasure. Um, and at the very end, I'll tell you, you know, tell you about mine. But uh, here you get to uh, listen to um, each of the uh, fans um, all running full uh, voltage. And... Uh, See what you think.
what I have uh, here now is finally the summary of the results uh, and conclusion of the testing. Um, here I have uh, two tables that uh, show the, um, the the performance of the fans. Um, uh, one sorted by the 4.3 overclock, um, uh, and then the other one by the 4.68 overclock. So this table here shows the performance of the fans. Um, and this one sorted by the uh, the 4.3, and here's the um, temps um, from the tables you saw previously uh, for each of the fans under load. So um, you see you have the manufacturer, the model number, uh, the RPM, the airflow. The airflow I, I took uh, right off the package or from the website. Same thing with the static pressure uh, of the fans. Uh, actually, a couple of them had to be calculated, um, but uh, put them all together in a table so you could see them. Um, and then uh, showing the idles here, the, the idles here that are bolded, um, I bolded them to because anything that was in one degree of each other, I just uh, you know assumed that could be within the uh, margin of error. So um, so anything that was you know 2.6 to 3.6, basically all these guys uh, performed the, the about the same. Then with regard to the temp at idle, uh, and then. Um, the uh, here's the actual delta load uh, for the uh, the temperature for each of the fans uh, from the testing that I did, and then uh, and then down below here I have the same thing for the uh, fans with the 4.68 overclock, um, showing the, uh, the 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 ones that performed the best down to the worst. Um, now one of the things to note is the uh, RPM rating here is off the package, but when I was doing testing I noticed. Uh, some of the fans uh, running less than their rated RPM. So I went and did some research and I also checked the packaging and it clearly states that uh, that RPM rating is plus or minus 10%. Uh, the actual operating uh, RPM should be within that. Now I didn't see any over the the package rated uh, speed here, but I did find quite a few that were, um, you know, 5%. I don't think that, none of them were, um, were greater than 10%. But I thought maybe there was something wrong with the fan controller, but it wasn't. It was actually the operating speed of that particular fan. Um, so, in looking at it underneath the 4.3 overclock load, you'll see that the XSPC 1650 um, was the best performer. But again, the Skyth was was what you know 0.5 degrees off. So, again, anything that was within a degree, um, I bolded to basically say they're about the same. And um, and then for the 4.68, again, um, you'll see um, within you know two tenths off, the Zinrulian and the uh, uh, the XSPC and the Sky, the General Typhoons, were were almost the same underneath under load, um, but then the rest went up um, you know more than a degree beyond that. Now up here in the 4.3 overclock, you notice it's um, in the rank here. It's the XSPC 1650, the Sky, then the Noxua. NFF12 and the Acasa, and then down here it stayed the Skyth and the XSPC um, uh, fans were uh, still neck and neck. But then when it got to the third performing fan under load, the Acasa uh, took that, and then came the uh, the Corsair. So, so after the first two, you'll see the mix is different um, when I underneath uh, load uh, with the results that I got, and then uh, I have. Uh, uh, finally, um, basically the same information in this table here, um, but what I also added was the pricing. Um, so as of September 1st, I went online and to um, websites that everybody can uh, buy from, um, at least uh, you know here in the U.S., and uh, found the prices um, that uh, were being advertised for these fans, um, and then. Um, the other thing that I also added here was what kind of accessories or other features were provided. Now, as you know, when I took you through the uh, XSPC, there's a Renroli in 1650, it had no package. It came uh, bulk. So there were no screws, no type of anti-vibration um, device at all for it, no reducers, and nothing other. The Scythe um, had um, screws. Um, the, uh, the AP15 uh, did not have any anti-vibration uh, mounts or, or uh, rubber screws. I did have a reducer and adapter and a power adapter. So uh, the AP15 did have that. The Noctua 
uh, NFF12s uh, have, of course, everything you can think of. It had screws. It had the, the anti-vibration um, um, rubber for the corners for mounting it. It also had uh, the rubber um, uh, um, screws, if you will, the anti-vibration uh, mounting uh, screws. And then it had reducers and extenders. The Akasa uh, basically just had the anti-vibration um, uh, rubber screws uh, to mount them with. The Noctua, uh, again, the Noctuas come with uh, everything that you would uh, need um, for that. Silverstone AP-121s had screws, anti-vibration um, um, uh, mounting screws, and um, the other adapters it had a uh, reducer. And then the Corsair um, also had the anti-vibration uh, feature built into it, the screws, and the other here, of course, the color coating rings. Um, oh, also the Silverstone, um, the reason I had other adapters, that actually has basically a fan guard built into it. Uh, that's part of its design. So what I tried to capture there is, you know, for the price, in addition to the performance that I'm showing that I received here, uh, this is the value that you get for it. So 695 for that fan was the cheapest and the most expensive was the Noctua. And then I listed all of the uh, features and accessories for you. So what I thought to take away on this would be to just highlight the difference between the highest and lowest here. So at, at idle, um, you had the uh, Corsair um, underneath the 4.3 overclock with the highest um, idle temp and then the uh, XSPC. Um, at the uh, at the lowest what 2.6 and then um, we also had uh, for the overclock at the 4.3 the difference between the uh, XSPC and the Corsair uh, four and a half degrees almost 4.4 degrees the uh, 4.68 overclock idle uh, the delta between that is between the uh, Noctua and FP12 and the uh, General Typhoon and then um, the heaviest load um, overclock, the 4.68, you had basically almost five degrees difference between um, the, the 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 fan, um, the Corsair, I'm sorry, the uh, Noctua um, NFP12 and the Zinruline 1650. Um, and then the difference in cost of the fans, um, you know, the Noctua NFF12 24.95 versus 695 basically $18 difference basically you could buy you could buy three of the Zenrulian uh, 1650 fans for less than the price of one of the Noctua NFF 12s um, so that just gives you an idea and then all the other fans they range the, other than that they you shoot from that price up to 14 15 bucks a fan and then uh, 20 for the other Noctua and 24 for it so um, Again, these were prices, online prices, as of September 1st, 2012. And uh, just to give you, again, more information uh, for you, you take into consideration the testing that I did. Now, uh, you know, I am not a, uh, I'm not, this is not a lab. Um, I did not have, um, uh, you know, laboratory um, settings. And I don't have the time, uh, you know, if you had a full-time job to do testing. Um, the one thing, there's a couple of things that I learned from this that I would do differently next time, I think. Uh, one, uh, instead of using the uh, temperature sensor uh, hanging off the, uh, the Cosimaster Pro as my temperature um, uh, source for the room, the ambient temperature in the room, I would use a regular, um, you know, uh, thermometer, a, a home uh, digital display thermometer um, because, you know, I, I had touched that probe a couple of times, uh, and when you touch it, certainly the, the temperature from my body would make that go up. Um, they are very good and sensitive uh, uh, temperature sensors, but um, and all of the fans were done the same way. So I think the testing that I did is still valid. I'm just saying that that, that could be more prone to slight changes um, um, when uh, taking some reading. So uh, I would I would do that differently. I would run the test five times instead of three and I would throw out the highest and the lowest and then take the median one I think but th that would basically you're talking a full day um, of testing to, f to do uh, each of those fans and uh, unfortunately I don't have that time right now but maybe in the future uh, I'll do that again or with some other fans so I would do that differently and um, 
I mean, I, th I think that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much it. The other thing then um, to talk about is the audio. Uh, I did not put the uh, the dB in this chart um, for the uh, decibels that they say because everybody's got a different threshold for loudness in their in their system with their fans. So um, for me, um, running them in pull, um, I found that the quietest fan for me was the Acasa. The Acasa um, Apache Black fan was to me the quietest uh, fan, and uh, it, uh, you know, as far as temps under load, actually it came in third in in this here, um, uh, but fourth in the uh, in the 4.3. So, but under the 4.68, it, it wasn't too far behind the XSPC in the sky. Um, after that, I mean, you know, the Corsair wasn't too bad, and the Gentle Typhoon, I guess maybe because I'm used to it. That wasn't so bad. The ones that surprised me, though, uh, the Noctua NF-F12, to me, was one of the loudest uh, fans that uh, th was one of the loudest fans in that lineup. Um, and uh, also the, the uh, XSPC fan is also loud, too. Uh, so, you know, so, um, but for 695 and basic, you know, basic uh, lower cost um, builds, uh, not in my dream system, maybe, but uh, I actually use that fan in the uh, Corsair 600T, and inside that case, I can't hear any. Uh, I don't. I don't. I, that that the sound of that fan does not bother me uh, in that build. Now remember that that microphone was placed pretty pretty close to um, to all these fans, but it was in the same spot for all of them, so that you guys could get a good uh, hear to them. And one of the things I did that um, I I may post in a separate video is. I turned the fans around. I turned the uh, uh, one set of the fans, the Noctua NFF12s, around and ran them in a, in a uh, push config. Um, I didn't take any temps, but I just wanted to hear the difference in the audio, the noise. And it was um, a little bit quieter, but it was still loud. So I'm not impressed by the Noctua NFF12 um, from a noise perspective um, with all the design features they made to help keep the noise quiet. And they, the focus flow is good. It is definitely a, 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 a fan that came out well in my testing. But um, but for the noise, I, you know, I will go with um, the Acasa and the Gentle Typhoon um, for for most of my bills now. And then the uh, Zenrulian for uh, is also one I have to consider for it being the best performing and the and the cost. You know, I'm thinking that. Uh, that's a fan that I will uh, consider in in, uh, in in my builds. Uh, one of the things to note, though, is um, you know you notice the Gentle Typhoon and the Zenrulian both have the higher um, RPMs as well. So those fans perform well in both loads, but they also ran faster. Um, all the other ones um, were 1,500, 13, 15. So um, uh, and then the uh, the uh, Akasa at 1,300 with the Noctua, this was almost dead silent to me if you go you know rewind back and and listen to him again um, you, that guy that guy was surprisingly quiet so so anyway um, again um, this is uh, just my uh, non-scientific uh, testing I tried to do the best that I can to show you uh, real-world testing um, on a uh, radiator and a configuration that uh, people can find in their in their systems and I ran it in a pull config um, uh, based on uh, Martin's uh, Liquid Labs um, results that I'll, I'll post down in the uh, a link in the in the information that uh, that I kind of gave me um, the guidance early on to look to use um, my fans in a, a pull configuration. Um, push pull maybe buys you a degree or so, but the cost of adding um, another set of fans for that one or two degrees to me is not worth it. And uh, so that's why I tend to go with uh, a pull config unless the case, um, um, you know, uh, dictates that I can't do a pull and I need to push. So, um, so I hope uh, this was informative and help helpful to you guys. Uh, I know it was for me. And um, so I hope you liked it. If you did, please like and favorite. And uh, if you're so inclined, please subscribe. And uh, that's it for me. Um, it's Ron Zanut, and please also look me up on Facebook. Um,
You can check me out, Ron's a nut on there, and I'll be posting some static pictures of some of the builds and stuff that I do um, uh, in addition to um, having these videos. So, uh, so come check me out. I appreciate it. Thanks.